Hello and welcome back to Art for Everybody. My name is Evi Steiner Böhm. I'm an artist from Germany and these two little figures here are called Pedro and Rosa and they sometimes help me in my videos to explain things or they might even correct mistakes I make. Learning to paint animals is not very difficult and it's especially easy if you use little plush toys like this koala here as models. And in this video, I'm going to prove that to you. So let's have a look at our little friend first and the problems you're going to face when you want to paint it. The first problem is the fur, of course. And you have already seen that in the video about drawing the koala, is that you have to watch very closely how the fur behaves on the body. If you look at the nose, you can see that from here, the fur grows up there, and then it turns, 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 the same on this side, and you have to imitate that with brush strokes. Last time, when using charcoal, you know, we used small strokes with our charcoal, and this time we're doing the same with a brush. And the second problem is that this animal has only gray and white fur. And gray and white are a little tricky to paint because of course most people would want to mix the grays with black and white. But in nature, you never have pure white or pure black because white and black always reflect the colors and the light from the surroundings. So what we are going to do is we're going to mix our black, grays and whites from three basic colors and white. And also the problem with the different shades of, of gray and black and white is that as soon as you use colors in your painting as well, like for example in the background, the problem is that the grays and the whites go into the background and the background, which is colored, comes into the foreground. And I'm going to show you a sketch I did of my koala where I used a color in the background and the koala, of course, is in all different shades of gray and black and white. And if I take away the color now, you will, of course, see at once that the value of the gray and the background is almost the same. And when we talk about value in painting, we mean how light or how dark a certain color is. So if your background and your foreground are almost the same value, it doesn't look very three-dimensional, as you can probably see. So how can we solve that problem? And I do it by using a very dark background. And I've already prepared that with the different colors I'm going to use in my painting. And I will paint my little koala now on this very dark surface. You would have a similar effect if you use white, but then of course you don't have a background at all. If you, if you want to use a colored background, it would have to be a very, very desaturated tone, like a very light yellow mixed with lots of white so that it goes into the background and your koala can, can come in the foreground. But I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to use three basic colors and white for my painting, for mixing the grays and the whites. And please do not mix up primary colors and basic colors. With primary colors, we always mean magenta, cyan, and yellow. And basic colors means simply different shades of blue, red, and yellow. And I'm going to use ultramarine blue as my blue, and burnt sienna as my red, and cadmium yellow as my yellow, and this is titanium white. Burnt sienna is, of course, not really red, 
because it has the three basic colors already in it. But it's a very good pigment for mixing grays together with the ultramarine blue. So this is uh, my choice today. And I'm going to use uh, these brushes. This is a number two filbert brush. This is a very cheap synthetic brush. Um, what might be useful, especially if you want to paint the long hairs of the ear, is a brush like this. Because with that, it's very easy, you know, to paint long strokes. Okay, before I start, I would like to show you how I mix my greys. And I start with the white, with the lightest color. And I add very tiny bits of the color to it. And you see that I get a very nice gray. And I've prepared these two uh, surfaces to demonstrate you that the same color, the same mixture of gray looks very, very different when you paint it on a light surface and on a dark surface. Can you see that this one looks a lot darker on the white than on the dark surface? And this is the choice you have. You can, can either use a very light surface or a very dark surface. In both cases, the gray stands out and you can get the three-dimensionality you want if you use those two surfaces. Okay, so that was the gray. And we're going to vary the gray, of course, with uh, different shades. You can have it more bluish. You can have it a little greenish. And these all look good if you use them in the painting, because as I said, the gray and the white always reflect the surroundings. So using different colors in your gray makes it look real. And the same, of course, with white. If you look at the white ears of our color, it might have some variations of white. It doesn't really look yellow or, or brownish or something. It still looks white, but you have the impression that the surrounding reflects on your white. So this is all you have to know about mixing the colors. And now I'm going to paint the little koala for you. Um, if you have trouble uh, drawing or painting the eyes or the fur, Please make sure that you watch the video about drawing the koala first because there I explain all the things in detail. So whenever I paint something, the first thing I do is that I block in the colors using three or four different tones of the color I'm going to use in my motif. Gray, of course, is not really a color, but as you've just seen, Gray can also have different variations, different accents of uh, other colors. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to try to give it, you know, dark tones, middle tones, a little lighter and the lightest on the light side, as I did with the drawing. And I'm going to start with the darkest tone which is not a rule, of course. You can also start with the middle tones. Just do what feels easy for you. And as I also said before, I'm going to do the same as in drawing. I'm going to do the brush strokes 
just like, like I did the strokes in my charcoal drawing. So the next thing I do is I paint the eyes and the nose and if you have seen the video about drawing I showed you that with animals you almost always have round eyes with a very dark iris and you almost never see the white of the eye. And I'm going to change the composition a little so that you see the eyes of my koala in full because that of course makes it look very alive. For the white of the eye, never use pure white but always use a little of the color around your eye. As you may probably see, the color of your surface always influences how the color looks on it. So this is something you have to take into consideration. But the good thing is, as soon as you start building up now from, from dark to light, you have the lighter colors a little thicker than the, than the darker colors, and that makes them stand out even more. This is a trick that we all use in oil painting. And if you learn it here with acrylics, it will be very easy for you to change to oil painting later. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to go over all my parts again, of course, trying with my brush strokes again to imitate uh, the fur, the short hairs on the body and the long hairs on, on the ears. And once that is done, I'm going to do some detail work. I'm going to make very dark shadows under the chin or between ear and body, and maybe give the koala a little shadow beneath the body, and then I'm going to leave it. So my little koala friend is finished and I hope I could prove to you that learning to paint animals is really not difficult at all. I thank you very much for watching and I surely hope to see you again next time when we are going to draw a tree together. Until then, have a good time and see you soon. <music>